hello for everybody that doesn't know me um i am Sentry. i originally hail from meridies out near atlanta but i've been um in on tier since either late 2015 early 2016 somewhere in that vicinity i do a lot of calligraphy stuff i'm currently the summits exchequer so if you're involved in that side of things you've probably gotten emails from me <laughs> and when um, I served as the Terra Pomeria scribe for a bit. Um, and one of the things that I did, I don't think I was actually officially scribe when I did this, but um, was when um, Clovis and Jimena stepped up, they were interested in the Visigothic minuscule um, hand for their awards and everything. And it was not in the large book of things that I use. Um, which is kind of the, the the book that is sort of the Bible for like calligraphy in the SCA, um, Drogon's Medieval Calligraphy. And the nice thing about this is for all of these different hands, um, which like when you're doing calligraphy, it's called a hand as opposed to like a font. Um, it has diagrams like this. Can I see it where it's got arrows showing you exactly how each, um, like how you're have, supposed to have your pin strokes, um, the ratio um, of each section of the letter. Um, and so, you know, normally you can look at that and that tells you exactly how to write it. But this was something that wasn't in that or in any of the other books that I could find. So I'm going to kind of walk you through a little bit of um, how I came up with creating my own ductus. And I'll show you a little bit of like how it's written. And, you know, some of this is just based on, it was very helpful that this turned out to be very similar to my own just regular handwriting. Because I'm odd in that I guess my handwriting is similar to calligraphy and most of my calligraphy I write similar to my handwriting. So the first step for me um, was, uh, I'm not sure that's what I wanted. I Googled it and I will say Googling it now, there's a lot more here than there used to be. <laughs> because I remember digging through a lot more than this, trying to find something that was helpful. Um, and there were definitely not as many examples of capitals. Um, but so basically what I do is I look for something, hopefully something that is sourced so that I know where um, it's coming from and that it's a an accurate like period piece of um, calligraphy. Um, but from there, what you can do is I look for something like this that's nice and easy to see. Um, And you, of course, will also get a lot of results for the wrong thing. So this is Carolingian minuscule, which is not helpful. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of it's just digging through things um, and seeing where you can find them. Um, so with that, um, so from there, I kind of isolate each letter that I end up using. And so with a lot of them, it's fine, like F. F is going to be everywhere. You can always find, you know, a like a T or an E. So there's a lot of letters that you don't have an issue with. But then there's a lot of letters that we use in modern English because that's what um, Terra Primaria has always written our scrolls in, or our um, charters and everything in. And so then we have to kind of make up letters that aren't historic that weren't historically used um, with this hand specifically. So with this, and you can see it's in the wrong order. Um, for instance, like here, I have a U, but I don't have a V because in that period, every time someone would have a B, a V, as in Victor, they actually just used B as in Bravo. I don't know why, that's just how it is. So anytime you'll, I'll, I will usually um, preserve that and just put a note here. So like anytime you've got a V, you just replace it with a B. 
And usually like in spoken English, it's clear enough that that's what it is, that it isn't too hard for someone to read and understand the charter, even if we do it that way. Because one of the things that I've always tried to be like very, very conscious of is making sure that however pretty I make the calligraphy, I still want someone to be able to read it. Um, so maintaining that readability is really important for me. But like I said, like with a V and B substitution, it's usually pretty clear. Like if you just sound out the word, you're like, oh, okay, this makes sense. Um, and so here, is my, I, there we go. I have an eternally lost cursor. I think there's, it leaves space in between my two monitors and it gets lost in between. Um, and I also don't often do capitals um, when I create a ductus because capitals tend to kind of be all over the place depending on where you look. The same hand may have completely different capitals. Um, if you look like if you're looking in Drogon, like if you look at the capitals for any given font, they just have like a few pages of examples and the capitals will look completely different. So it's kind of a, you know, however intricate you want to be with your capitals. And I, you know, and that also gives individual scribes a way to kind of make it their own and put their own flair into it. I mean, that part was, it's fairly straightforward. Again, like one of my biggest problems is finding, you know, good examples that are sourced. So usually like medieval manuscripts is good because they'll usually post a link. Um, and a lot of stuff has been digitized and even more stuff has been digitized recently. Um, once the, you know, people weren't able to go places in person, a lot of different places started digitizing all of the things. So like, you know, the British library has a lot of stuff and they've a catalog of illuminated manuscripts. <laughs> so if you're ever looking for something, whether it be, you know, the, like uh, the art portion or the calligraphy portion, um, the British library probably has examples that you can dig through. Um, sorry, would you be using a broad edge nib or a pointed nib for this? I will show you. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. So I can kind of use that as a transition. I didn't think about this. Let me go turn on a couple of lights so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. The sun has gone down significantly and I forgot to take that into account. Um, let's see if I can do... Oh, the book is Mark Drogan's Medieval, Medieval Calligraphy. So uh, what you're saying about the sun going down is that you need more illumination? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes I do. And I'm using my lamp as a stand for my other camera. <laughs> so I can't use that. All right, I'm going to try this. There we go. So the nibs that I use are just a um, square. Like this is a number, what is this? Five. Um, there we go. And it's just a flat. I've never had much luck being able to use the, the angled nibs. Um, some people do, like, you know, to some extent, a lot of this is kind of a whatever works for you. And here is an example of what this looks like. Um, this was one that we did for uh, oh, this is a rapier champion, like a recognition of the rapier champion, um, where I messed up a word somewhere. <laughs> a lot of the, the the charters that I have done have required a couple of tries, because you get most of the way through, and then you spell something wrong, and you're like, all right, well. <laughs> um, so yeah, and you can kind of see, like, this is uh, kind of characteristic of how my capitals tend to go. Um, I don't do anything extremely fancy with them. Um, but 
what I'll do. And a little bit kind of of my process, um, I have um, this lovely piece of Terra Pomeria history. <laughs> um, and then just, I have, I really like, I have it's um, Oak Gall ink. I got a whole bunch in a, uh, I think it was a raffle for volunteers at Castle Wars in Meridies years and years and years ago. Um, and it's just a whole bunch of Oak Gall ink made by one of the um, um, laurels in, in Meridies. And I love it. <laughs> The only downside is with the oak gall ink, it does slowly like erode your nibs. But nibs are aren't that expensive, so I just order does it a bunch. The paper also. Uh, I have not had issues with paper. Um, that I've seen anywhere. Um, it's mostly I think it doesn't like the the metal. Like I don't think it messes with the paper, but I think it's it interacts with the metal. But I don't I'm know the exact sure chemistry. But iron gall over time on ancient manuscripts, it um, eats through the, the parchment. Huh. Yeah, I haven't heard of any issues with it. Um, I know, like, I don't know if it would be worse on parchment versus like different types of paper or whatever. And if it, if the time scale, at which it eats away at it is long enough that it's not something we worry about too much with the SCA. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't had, I've not had seen any indications that it's eating through anything other than my nibs. Um, and then I have, I love this light box. It was not super expensive. It's just a little, um, um, it's just a little USB light box um, that has a, I can vary the um, intensity of the light based on what I need. And I keep a couple of these which is just a piece of paper where I have drawn in lines. Um, so then what I do is I can take usually painter's tape, tape this down, and then I'll put my, what I'm working on over it. And then I've got the lines to work with, but I don't have to draw them and then erase them. Um, and I think this, the one that I use the most is I've got a two millimeter, three millimeter and two millimeter, um, which seems to work fairly well. So like um, this, I line it up. So that, that three millimeter section in the middle is where the bulk of the letter would be. So like if you have an O, it would fit entirely in between that three millimeter line. And then if you have something that sticks up, it goes up to that two millimeter section and down it goes into the other two millimeter section. And then it'll skip to the next one. <laughs> oh, you can't, I'm, I was gonna wave, but I, then I realized that my other camera is not on. <laughs> only see one camera at a time. <laughs> um, so yeah. So with something like this, you just have The other thing about the oak gall is it takes it a second to show up. It's usually just short strokes. Oops. 
make sure I just turn this up well enough. When it works like that, I'm in a funny angle, so it's skewed a little bit, but um, I don't have the ability to zoom this in, unfortunately. Are there other questions? I kind of want this to be like interactive if folks have questions, I'm not sure. Like a lot of it's fairly short to explain. Um, My questions are all kind of off topic, sorry. I mean, if it's, especially if it's like calligraphy scribal stuff related, I'm, well, it is we, can, we can branch. It's just not calligraphy related. We can branch. I'm not as great at painting or anything, so I don't know if I can answer them, but we can branch. <laughs> well, it's more like when you receive a scroll, if you want to frame it and put it on your wall, how do you frame it if there's like a big wax seal lump that makes it not flat? Mm. I know this one. <laughs> <laughs> Get a, get a frame that's set up to have a mat in it that automatically puts space between the frame and the uh, scroll. Thank you. You can also put additional, like, so like if you have a, fan, a pretty mat going around it, put a little bit of additional pieces of thick paper or something behind the mat so that it's got a little bit extra buffer. Or you can do fancy two layer mat stuff. Yeah, you can get crazy with mats, but you can definitely use those to help create a buffer between the glass and your scroll. Thank you. That is <laughs> very useful. Other questions? I feel like this is short, but again, I'm not sure what else to, to throw in there. Cat's upset. I... It, it is a difficulty with Zoom classes. There's not as much back and forth, but we are, enjoying this very much yeah no like i said it's it, it was kind of fun to to get to experiment here let me i would invite you to rant about the unreasonability of the nobles who ask this of you but i'm afraid that would just get edited out <laughs> <laughs> it might yeah it was definitely i mean it's not the weirdest thing or most work intensive thing that I've gotten. I was in the, the same Shire as the first MOD of Meridies and ended up doing all of the calligraphy for his um, scroll, which was ginormous and also tiny, tiny font, tiny, tiny. I used my tiniest nib. <laughs> was How the text long that you? long or were there just a lot of pictures? No, it's Lee. Give me a moment and I will see if, so this is, so for scale, this is the book that I just showed you. And this is the, so it was just very, very tiny. What X height is that? Um, I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember what the sizing was. Cause this was 2015. Nice. But yeah. Very tiny. And it's all on um, this giant piece of um, pergamelata. So like it wasn't on parchment, but it was on the next best thing. I've been but wanting to buy that piece. from Paper and Ink Arts, but the shipping to Dubai is just way too expensive. <laughs> yeah, I think, I assume they got it. I didn't order it, but I assume they got it from John Neal. Um, I, I took both for international shipping because I also wanted to get um, Michael Saul's Learning to Write Spencerian. Um, but like, I think the shipping was $100 or something when I put the stuff I wanted to get together in my basket and yeah, it wasn't in my budget. Yeah, well, like this piece, they may not even have to pay shipping because they may have just gone and got it. 
because John Neal's in North Carolina, so that's not a bad drive. I, I think it's made in Italy, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, wow. But I was really, really worried I was going to screw something up and ruin this exorbitantly expensive piece of <laughs> paper. You can you can go at it with a knife if you do mess up. Yeah, yeah, yes. and you can see like I wrote it out ahead of time on um, uh, just a Bristol paper, Bristol board. Does the Which, kingdom subsidize expenses on exorbitantly expensive pieces of paper for scrolls? Um, not this. This was this he did. Um, I think they do provide a lot of so meridies at least doesn't do didn't then do charters um all of their award scrolls and everything were originals um and so like you'd go to like a scribal night or whatever and just you know there would be um bristol board available so most of it was done on bristol board and that was kind of how i got sucked into the sca in the first place what, what exactly is the sca society for calligraphic arts creative anachronism Okay, I was close. Okay, are you somebody, that, did I, did you follow this from one of my links or? No, um, I got here today because when I can't sleep at night, I look for calligraphy events to attend. <laughs> and it's a really bad time to do this shit because I don't remember what I've done the next day because I'm half asleep when I do it. Um, and I saw this on my Google calendar like yesterday and I was like hmm what is this and where did I find it and I spent like an hour trying to figure out where I found your event from because I had no idea but it was in my calendar with the zoom link and all and it turns out I found you on Facebook which I don't actually use other than to do weird stuff like this when I can't sleep at night <laughs> <laughs> that's fair um yeah so we're um the Society for Creative Anachronism is we've got um branches all over the world um, although we're, I think, the most densely based in the U.S., um, it's a bunch of people that do historical recreation. Um, we're not, we're not doing like reenactments of specific events or anything. It's just mm -hmm. you know, anything from basically pre-Elizabethan times anywhere. <laughs> okay, is is it like role playing? Ish, kind of. Like that's a we little bit. Play, of it. We are playing roles of characters. They're just not based on anybody specific, and there's no real like rules that you have to roll dice or anything for. We're not. Uh, and are yeah, you a great sure. character when you meet? Uh, yeah, I mean, it. So there's kind of different levels of events and stuff that we have. So like for our mm -hmm. large events, um, when when they're in person, <laughs> um, you know, we kind of the the hope is that everyone will have on some like make some level of effort towards um like cost like garb um mm -hmm. which we have loner garb available you know for anybody that shows up and doesn't have their own um but like the level to which you are trying to be like historically accurate varies dramatically depending on the person <laughs> Um, so like there's some people that will have no problem making their garb out of cotton and other people that would have hysterics trying to wear cotton because that's absolutely not historically accurate. Let okay. alone uh, synthetics. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm going to call out that cotton is period for certain cultures. True, true. For both, a lot of the ones that people are using, like doing garb from, that like that we come across most of the time, it's not. So, but we, uh, we kind of put a lid on some of those people that get to that level of don't police other people to that level. Yeah, that's basically you it. Be able like to access and make things out of nicer stuff, but they might not be able to. Yeah. The general yeah, rule of thumb is to not ruin anybody else's fun. So you don't want to be coming in wearing a modern football jersey because that's going mm -hmm. to take people out of the suspension of disbelief and it's going to ruin their fun. But you mm -hmm. also don't want to be going around saying, I can't believe you mixed a 1600s fashion with a 1300s fashion. You're a horrible person. <laughs> because that also ruins somebody's fun. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it, it just varies on, you know, what people, and like, again, with like, there's plenty of people that use like modern inks. 
you know, I happen to have the best luck with, you know, this period ink that I have, but, you know, if modern ink works for somebody, are you, are you coming up? <laughs> this is, this is the Kitty? large black cat. <laughs> oh, this, um, you're so lucky. Yeah, I have eight cats, cat. but they're not here. They're back home in India where I live. Oh. Um, I've come to Dubai and gotten stuck here because of Corona and situation. Oh, that sucks. But, yeah, I miss my cat. It's very nice to see yours. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, he likes he likes Zoom calls. He's Aww. a big fan of Zoom calls. Because <laughs> it usually means the lap is free. <laughs> Aww. Um, but yeah, so, you know, and people get involved in different things. You know, a lot of people will do fighting. Um, mm -hmm. I do like mostly craft type stuff. Um, you know, other people like, and I also do a lot of service. Like, as I mentioned at the beginning, I'm the exchequer. So um, I'm the kind of regional treasurer. So I kind of maintain one, like a couple of bank accounts which have very little activity ever. Um, so that, that part of my job is very easy. <laughs> but you still get to do paperwork to make sure those bank accounts have the correct signatories. Yes, the hard part of my job is all of the branches that report to me who I have to chase down, which is not ever Terra Pomeria. Nope, because we have the best <laughs> exchequer. <laughs> I, I, I already have your report. <laughs> I'm just sometimes bad about signing it. Well, yeah, but you only have to do the one that once a year. Right. I tend to forget that he sent it to me. <laughs> yeah, uh, and honestly, that is the least there? important part. <laughs> Oh, you're not muted. I'm not. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Greetings, Your Excellency. <laughs> um, how many of you are there in Terra Pomeria? So um, our brand is, uh, is a, we're, we're <laughs> roughly about 50 active members, active paid members right now. In our at the baronial level, so we're just that's yeah. fifty to two hundred people total. Yeah, because to I'm pretty sure the number I send in for quarterlies is about two hundred ish. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, but with the uh, the whole pandemic, um, since the benefit of being a paid member is you get a discount for our in person events, and we're not holding in person events. People have let their their memberships lapse right now, but uh, regionally, I think we're like the Pacific Northwest, like U.S. and part of Canada. Uh, I think we're are we about fifteen hundred members? I think. I want to say I don't know. It's been a while since I've looked at the paper, like but. Uh, but yeah. That's awesome. Can I ask a calligraphy question? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's been asked though. I've been moving in and out, sorry. Um, have you have you talked about how, uh, is, there, is there anything that you would change about the hand that you developed? Um, anything that proved to be more problematic than anticipated or? um yeah along I don't those think things so at least not for me um okay. that actually might be a better question to ask someone else who's used it after me gotcha <laughs> <laughs> so like someone who's had to use the ductus that i created okay which reminds me i need to i did did you give me a copy of the ductus i don't know uh i know christmas has one okay i need to get a copy because eventually I have some cards that need to go out and I figure that I can probably manage. <laughs> yeah, I can send it to you. Yeah, it's, it's the, I, I deliberately created it to be fairly easy to do. <laughs> yeah. Again, it's really and easy. As well? <laughs> yeah. What was that? Thank you. <laughs> I was saying, may I get a copy as well? Yeah. Um... Were we gonna make the copy available on the YouTube notes or? Uh, 
yes, but uh, if you can share it into the chat, um, that would be good. Then I'll have it for later. Oh, yeah, it looks like I can't put a file in. Should be able oh, to, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it's better to do like a Google Documents. Um, okay, let me. Or if our friend would like to uh, send an email address to us, we can also forward <coughs> it on onto them. Yeah, I can give you my email. <laughs> 